Honourable Senators, Senator McKenzie has submitted a proposal under Standing Order 75 today. It is shown at item 13 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? I note there are at least four senators standing. Five? We got five, have we? Senator Babette has indicated he is standing for the purpose of. With the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the informal arrangements made by the whips. Senator McKenzie. Thank you, Mr. Deputy President. And I rise to debate this matter of public importance that has seen consumers, Australian travellers, Australian exporters, uh, Australian customers right around the country exercised. In the middle of a cost of living crisis, this government has once again been caught asleep at the wheel. They are making decisions each and every day across a range of portfolios which make it harder for mum and dad to pay the mortgage, which make it harder for mum and dad to pay the school fees, uh, which make it more and more difficult for Australian families to make ends meet. And the latest disastrous decision by Anthony Albanese's government is to reject the application by Qatar Airways to have more international flights. Why is that important? Sounds quite technical. Because right now Australians are paying 50 per cent more for international flights than they were pre-COVID. Because Qantas is making a mozza, a big enough mozza to pay their CEO a lot of money. A lot of money. Because there seems to be a cosy relationship between this government, particularly the Prime Minister, and this company, because Australians also need a vast a diversity of choice of destination, not just to go where this carrier or that carrier determines it, but to have a range of options open to them. And for those of us that live out in the region, to facilitate the freight task. So the more of those big planes coming in and leaving Australian uh, capital cities, the more tourists we get coming in, the more choice Australians have at a lower cost uh, going out, and the more of those bellies of those planes are filled with fantastic Australian exports. We saw the tourism industry come out uh, a little while ago and say this decision has cost the Australian tourism sector in excess of $788 million. That is real jobs in real communities right now. We know that this decision has meant that um, the opportunity lost in terms of uh, price increases is in excess of 40 per cent. That is a lot of money in a cost of living crisis. And what does this government do when asked, why did you make the decision? Just tell us why. They refuse to answer it. You saw it in question time here in the Senate today as the Foreign Minister, the Finance Minister and the Trade Minister were asked what was the real reason? Why has this government put forward seven different reasons from protecting Qantas's profits, an actual reason given by the Assistant Treasurer, uh, to local jobs, national interest. Um, I think Minister King put forward that she wanted to um, you know, lower emissions by not having so many planes in the sky. I mean, it's just incredible. It's as if the laws of economics and the laws of physics do not apply to this government. Don't ask them about the principles of science and economics. It's a little bit like their voice argument. It's all about the vibe. Listen to our rhetoric. Well, things are wrong with this decision. The Australian public deserves to know why you made it, that it wasn't just a cosy special relationship, it wasn't just a dirty deal so that you paint yes on some of your planes, or that you know, uh, the Prime Minister prefers preferential treatment. If that is not the case, this is your opportunity to stand up and say why. And now we've got the president of the ALP, Wayne Swan, the former treasurer, 
who is also the mentor of Jim Chalmers, he's come out and said this decision needs to be reversed. He's not saying review it, he's saying reverse it. And then we've got Stephen Miles from Queensland saying it needs to be reviewed. We've got Malinowskis, the Premier of South Australia, saying this needs to be looked at. What does Tony Burke get up and say this morning? No, nah, Minister King got it right. This government got it right. I tell you what, something stinks about this decision, and we all know it. You know it, which is why the industrial left is furious that you're protecting Qantas, their arch enemy. The far left wants to renationalise, and those sensible among you know it's the wrong decision for Australians who are facing a cost of living crisis. Senator White. I've got a long history in the airline industry, a very long history. I've acted for um, a range of employees in that industry for 25 years. What I can tell you I've seen about this coalition is an abandonment of people in the airline industry in this, this country, dating back to uh, 2001. In fact, next week is the, is the uh, anniversary of the collapse of ANSET. And I remember coming here to these halls and walking around and begging coalition ministers to intervene in the ANSET crisis, begging them. They slammed the, the doors in our faces and 16,500 Australians lost their jobs when ANSET collapsed. 4,500 of them were ASU members. This coalition only thinks about politics when it comes to air, the airline industry. They do not think about real people. They, and again, history repeated itself. What did we see when Virgin went into administration uh, in 2020? What we saw was exactly the same thing again. Doors shut, do nothing, uh, let, let uh, aviation in this cu country suffer. That's, and so this born again view about how we should, uh, about airfares and how we should uh, negotiate air services agreements. I mean, honestly, the previous minister, Mr McCormack, uh, in fact rejected Qatar, the Qatar Airlines um, applications for more flights to Australia. That tells you that there's something that is, that is not in the national interest. Um, and it is ridiculous to sit here and to hear uh, Senator McKenzie lecture us about, about uh, the air services agreements uh, and, and cost of living and, and the cost of flights when she has little or no, when the senator has little or no understanding of the way in which air, the airline industry operates in this country. We have more than 100 air service agreements with different countries around the world. We have eight international airlines from China operating 90 services a week, which is up 30 services since June. Vietnam Airlines has announced non-stop flights to Vietnam. Cathay Pacific has increased flights to Brisbane. Air India has doubled services to Australia and Singapore Airlines has announced more flights. It's uh, also been the case that Qatar uh, Airways, as we heard during question time, can operate as many flights as it would like through Adelaide, Darwin, Canberra, Cairns and Gold Coast. It's also, as I've said, the hypocrisy of the coalition in this de de debate is, uh, is unparalleled in my view. I don't believe their spin. They don't really have a, a leg to stand on. What I do know, though, is that the cost, on the cost of living matter, the 2023-24 budget directed nearly $15 billion in targeted support to the most vulnerable Australians who are suffering after a dec decade of stagnated wages thanks to the coalition's inaction while they were in government. When I'm casting my mind back and thinking about the government's record on cost of living relief in the last 18 months, it struck me just how much this government has delivered to, e to ease and make life easier for Australians amidst what is a difficult set of economic circumstances. We've got the energy bill relief the government uh, legislated last year that's been rolling out. And my own electorate, I know, uh, 
office has been dealing with dozens of people in Victoria, mainly seniors and pensioners who have taken that up. Last week I saw I went to a childcare centre and the, the way in which they talk about the ease of pressure on easing the pressure on cost of living about because of the cheaper childcare policy it was astounding to me. They, they told me absolutely how this is making a difference to lots and lots of families. I've heard plenty of positive uh, uh, feedback also from constituents, doctors and consumer advocacy groups in relation to the impact of the 60-day prescriptions. And it will have effect, effect on millions of Australians with an ongoing health condition. So really that's what the cost of living issue is about, doing real things for people day in and day out. And that is what this government has done in the budget and since the day we took office. Talk, and as I said, talk, the coalition talking about uh, air services agreement, it, agreements is just galling, to be frank, absolutely galling. Well, I have on the morning sheet Senator Roberts and then you, Senator Smith, but I'm at, at the mercy of the will of the chamber. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. As a servant to the many different people who make up our one Queensland community, I wonder, as many constituents do, who does Qantas have photographs of? How could Qantas engage in restrictive trade practices, fraud and a scorched earth policy approach to industrial relations and still be called Australia's national airline? Are these our national values now? Minister King's decision to stop Qatar Airlines increasing their flights to Australia provided a direct financial benefit to Qantas. As a result, everyday Australians are now paying higher airfares on those international routes than if Qatar had been allowed to provide competition to Qantas. I note that over the last 12 months, Senator Sheldon has been resolute in his attempts to hold Qantas accountable through the Senate committee system. I welcome Senator Sh Sheldon's comments and, his, and appreciate his one-man war on the temple of uncaring corporate greed that Qantas has become. Let me be clear. Qantas are an embarrassment to free enterprise competition. Everyday Australians are now faced with dysfunctional, unaffordable air travel simply because the government keeps sticking its nose in where it does not belong. It shouldn't be up to the government to decide how many air flights an airline has. It should not be up to the government. The free market should sort that out. Free enterprise competition based on pricing, service, safety and availability would sort that out. Passengers make their purchase decision on aircraft tickets based on the most fundamental duty of an airline, delivering a passenger to their destination at the same time as their luggage, a skill Qantas seems to have lost. Free enterprise competition ensures the airline with the lowest fares, best service, safest planes and most reliable luggage will gain market share and airlines who treat their customers with hubris and arrogance will fare badly. Free enterprise competition makes companies better. We, though, do not have free enterprise competition in many industries in Australia, including airlines. We have crony capitalism, a club of investment funds and their corporate henchmen that maximise short-term profits and dividends over the best long-term interests of a corporation or personal greed from the corporation's CEOs. It is a type of corporate asset stripping that's, far, that's behind the fall from grace of our once-loved national carrier. To dress this decision up as national interest is misdirection. Misinformation. Qantas is a private company whose actions by le leading shareholders to decide what happens. First State, Vanguard and BlackRock. Others pulling the strings at Qantas are JP Morgan, HSBC, State Street, Goldman Sachs and Citicorp. Which explains a lot. The Qatari government fully owns Qatar Air. There is nothing in this deal for the predatory billionaires that control Qantas. Was this the reason for the decision to block Qatar Airlines expansion? And if so, who is really telling the Albanese government what to do? Thank you. Uh, Senator Dean Smith, you have Thank to Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. I've got four questions for the government. The first question is, what is the government doing to attract and retain more airlines and build confidence in Australia's aviation industry? Second question, why has the government decided not to reinstate the ACCC's airline monitoring report introduced by Josh Frydenberg, then Treasurer, as part of the COVID response. Twelve reports, the final report in June of this year. Why has the government not chosen to reinstate that ACCC report, which I would argue is a key protection for consumers and for competition? 
And thirdly, why has the government chosen to sit idly by and not pursue any of those recommendations that are contained in those ACCC monitoring reports? The fourth question is, who is it that Anthony Albanese is listening to? It's clearly not his Labor Party colleagues in South Australia. He's turned his back on them. It's clearly not his Labor Party colleagues in Queensland. He's turned his back on them. And it's not even Wayne Swan, the former treasurer, former Labor treasurer, and now national president of the Australian Labor Party. No, no, no. The Prime Minister Albanese has turned his back on Wayne Swan, who has said this decision deserves to be reviewed. And I would add to that, it deserves to be reviewed in public and not in private. Why is it that Prime Minister Anthony Albanese doesn't think he has to listen to the former chairman of the ACCC, Rod Sims, who said about the Qatar decision, I think it does hurt competition. He went on to say, if there was a time to allow new entrants in, this is the time. Why is it that Anthony, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese thinks that he can turn his back on between $540 million and almost $800 million of economic activity? Why does Prime Minister Albanese think that he can turn his back on almost $500 million of tourism and hospitality activity. What is happening in the Prime Minister's head? What's happening in the Treasurer's head? We know what's happening in Andrew Lee's head. Andrew Lee, the sh shadow, sorry, Senator, Andrew Lee, the assistant. We will remind apologies. you to use members from the other place at correct titles. For those of you who aren't familiar with Mr Andrew Lee, uh, he is the Assistant Minister for Charities, Competition and the Treasury. And guess what Andrew Lee says? Guess what Andrew Lee says? Senator Scar, he says, don't look at Australia. If you want to see a competitive avi aviation industry, look to Europe. Andrew Lee says I to will, Australians, uh, remind you, Senator, the Assistant Minister for Competition, to reporting title. to the Treasurer, Dr Chalmers, reporting to Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister, says, don't look here. Andrew Lee says, I look uh, to Senator, Europe. Please resume your seat. I have asked you on a number of occasions. I know it's only Monday, but it's out of respect for people from that other place. Excuse me, do you... Did, can I um, just continue, if you don't mind, Senator? With I have been very patient and asked the Senator, good Senator, to refer to people with their correct title, and he is Assistant Minister. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. I accept your intervention, absolutely. Mr Lee, the Assistant Minister for Competition, says, I look to Europe with its range of low-cost carriers and see what looks like an even more competitive ecosystem. Really? I thought Mr Lee, the Assistant Minister for Competition's job, was to look after the aviation <laughs> ecosystem in this country. But no, no, no. He says, don't look here, don't look here. Look at Europe. Look at Europe. So the question still stands. This question still stands. Having released its final report, in June of this year, the ACCC Airline Competition in Australia report, which I might add exposed flight delays, flight cancellations, excessive profits and terrible experiences of customers, why won't the government continue to extend this particular monitoring regime for the protection of consumers and for the protection of competition? A very, very simple first step. I would have thought Mr Lee, the member for Fenner, would have come to work today, Monday, and said, Dr Chalmers, I've got an Thank idea. Thank you, Senator. Your time has expired. Senator Sheldon. No, good. good. Thank you. Well, it will be good because—thank uh, you, um, thank you, Senator. And 
Because what, I really, what we need to be going through, and that is exactly what's happened regards aviation policy over these last many, many years. Because what, did, what we need to realise is that those opposite, when ANSEC collapsed, John Howard, the then Prime Minister, did nothing, did absolutely nothing. Tens of thousands of jobs lost in this country, even when people were prepared to make a difference and stand up businesses and Order. workers coming together, Order. nothing being done. That's what they did. But, but let's just say oh, that was a one-off, a one-off tragedy, a horrible tragedy, because we saw what that did to the tourism industry and the markets right across the air, aviation markets right across the economy. But let's wait. What did they do when they had the next opportunity, those opposite? Because it's in their DNA to do nothing about supporting Australian aviation, doing nothing serious about making a difference in Australian aviation. And it's also about making sure that we don't turn around and have the results that we need for the Australian tourism industry. Because what did they do when Virgin collapsed? They sat on their hands again, the second time. The two major crises that have happened in the aviation industry under those opposite watch, they did nothing. They did nothing because they weren't concerned about the workforce. They weren't concerned about the effect on the aviation industry. They weren't con concerned about the effect on the Australian economy. They were just sat on their hands and said, by the by. Well, quite clearly, when you turn around and you start making important decisions in the aviation industry, then you need to be consistent. When you start making comments on the aviation industry, you need to be consistent. Because what they did do in the last period, during the, job, uh, during the terrible crisis of COVID, they gave $2.7 billion to Qantas. $2.7 billion. $2.7 billion. You can't even say it quickly without it sounding like a hell of a lot of money, because it was, and it is. No obligations no commitments, no requirements. And what have we seen the consequences? Untrained staff, because staff were put off. $2.7 billion was spent on an ethical, moral obligation on Qantas to turn around and keep people employed. But they weren't kept employed. In actual fact, we're now 10,000 people directly employed, less, well, so 9,957. 1,700 workers are in the High Court saying that when you spend $2.7 billion as a government and you get badly treated, they're saying this is an ethical question. Unfortunately, it's not a legal question, it's an ethical question. And you say to a company, you're supposed to turn around and keep our jobs, that you should keep to that commitment. But they're also taking a legal challenge up. On the ethical question, did those opposites say anything? Absolutely nothing. In actual fact, the only person who did speak up was then Assistant uh, Workplace Relations Minister Amanda Stoker, who blamed the workers for losing their jobs. Didn't blame Alan Joyce, didn't blame Qantas, didn't blame the previous then Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who gave them $2.7 billion and his government with no obligations. No, she blamed the workforce. Those 1,700 people had spent decades working extraordinary nights, shift work, missing their families to make sure that the company they loved remained in the air and stayed safe. Now, when those opposite come in here and talk about what is right and what's wrong in the aviation industry, there is a big picture. And let's look at the whole picture. Because when they turned around and they let, let Alan Joyce turn around and Qantas turn around and the board turn around and make this decision to run this airline into the ground, when those workers were left, when we wanted to get back up into the air, there was no workers to do the work. There was no trained workers to do it efficiently. There was no capacity to actually turn around and make sure that we had an airline that could turn around and do the work that was necessary. Well, this, this airline and the circumstances that have occurred regarding aviation is squarely at the feet of those opposite. They have to take the responsibility of the challenges that are happening in the aviation industry. Because $2.7 billion didn't do it because you never made it happen. Now, clearly, with the challenges forward on what we do regards Qantas, I want to see these people across the way support some of the announcements that were said in the House today, because that will help the workforce at Qantas and every Thank other you, workforce like it you, that's Senator, being exploited. Your time has expired. Senator Pocock, David. 
Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I rise to add my support for calls to increase competition in Australia's aviation sector, leading to lower prices and better protections for consumers. And more broadly, we clearly have an issue with competition in Australia. This is not just aviation. You look at the banks, the supermarkets. There is a need for both sides of politics to take this seriously, to deliver the kinds of reforms that will ensure that Australians across the country get better services at more competitive prices. With international airfares currently 50 per cent more expensive than pre-COVID, it's no surprise that Qantas posted a record profit, uh, $1.7 billion net profit. That is a huge amount of money. Here in the ACT, Qantas's slot hoarding is a particular problem for Canberrans. Qantas cancelled 12 per cent of flights from Canberra, Canberra to Sydney in July. 53 flights were cancelled out of Canberra Airport in the month of July, and it's been hovering around that 50 mark. And yet we have, we have uh, reports and, and um, ways to deal with this. We've got the 2019 Productivity Commission inquiry, which looked at slot hoarding, the Harris Review, which has been sitting on a number of ministers' uh, desks, still isn't implemented. Um, but it's clear that the government needs to urgently reinstate the ACCC's flight monitoring, which previously found the lack of effective competition over the last decade has resulted in underwhelming outcomes for consumers in terms of airfares, reliability of services and customer service. And above all, we need more transparency around the decision-making process from this government. Thank you, Senator. Senator Canavan. Well, thank you, uh, Deputy President. Well, I, I, thought, uh, I thought the government might heed the, the overwhelming calls over the weekend and at least take a step back from this disastrous uh, Qatar Airways decision. I, I note that, um, uh, that the boss of Flight Centre this morning was himself indicating there were rumours around the tourism industry, I suppose, some false hope uh, that the government might back down. I mean, you had the ALP National President Wayne Swan out there over the weekend calling on the government to act and review the decision. You've had uh, the Labor state governments of Queensland and South Australia uh, openly disagreeing uh, with, this, with this decision on Qatar Airways. So I thought, I thought maybe, maybe the, the government would, would admit its mistake here, uh, admit that it's made the wrong call. Uh, and at least review the decision, at least sort of suspend the decision and say, OK, we're going to review it now, ask Qatar Airways to resubmit and reconsider it all. But no, no, they, they have been stubborn, the Labor Party today uh, in Canberra, the first day back since this all blew up. They've been very stubborn, pig-headed even, uh, in deciding they're not going to listen to the tourism industry, they're not going to listen to their own national president, they're not going to listen uh, to Labor state governments. They are going to continue uh, to be in bed with one of the biggest companies in this country. Uh, they can continue to do the bidding uh, of a company that has uh, trashed its reputation among the Australian people. And really, the only conclusion you can make right now is that your government, the Australian government, is in lockstep with Qantas. They're in lockstep with Qantas on the voice. They're in lockstep with Qantas on making, wanting to keep your prices higher uh, for how you fly. And they won't have any truck from anyone uh, with splitting them, splitting this. Uh, the relationship between um, Mr Alan Joyce, Mr Anthony Albanese seems uh, much stronger than any marriage in this country. They just don't seem to be able to be separated. Uh, they're, they're lockstep together here uh, in, in support of overcharging Australian consumers and protecting themselves from competition. It's pretty hard to explain this decision. How, how can you explain uh, a decision that seems to have flied in the face of uh, the recommendation from government departments? That's what we're told, at least, that the government's own departments recommended the uh, extra flights come in. Flies in the face of the evidence that international flight prices are now more than 50 per cent higher than they were before COVID. We clearly need more competition. We need to get those prices back down, hopefully, to a reasonable level for Australians. Uh, they refuse to, to do that in this case. It just beggars belief how this decision has been made. And then on top of that, of course, you've got the embarrassing situation where the, the Minister for Infrastructure, Minister King, just can't seem to explain the decision at all. Uh, she's gone through a, a, a black book of different excuses. Uh, she must have a Rolodex there of excuses uh, for her decision including the absurd situation she originally, I think, came out with saying that it was because of the human rights work record of the Qatari government, even though Qantas partner with 
Emirates, who are another Gulf state with very similar <laughs> records on labour and all these issues. So why is Qantas and Emirates OK, but Virgin and Qatar are apparently anathema? That doesn't make any sense. So she hasn't repeated that because that's absurd. Uh, she's, she's moved on to, uh, to saying it's uh, because of uh, because of the need to protect competition. She's, uh, her own minister, uh, Stephen Jones, been out there saying it's because they want to make, keep Qantas' profits high. And I thought we want to keep prices low for consumers, but apparently this government is all about big business and big profits, according to Minister Jones. That's what he had to say about it. There's been no logical explanation for this. And, and while it looks like the government won't support uh, the motion today, I do hope that this chamber, that the Senate, thinks about we need a big, bigger investigation here and what the hell's happening with these decisions. Um, as Senator Pocock mentioned, it's not just uh, the decision here on the Qatari uh, application. There's also uh, the price monitoring regime, which has been inexplicably finished and ended and terminated. Uh, there is also a decision on the slots at Sydney Airport sitting on the minister's desk. She's had a review there. It, it would seem for a, a review concluded almost a year ago, a review established by the former coalition government. It, it reported to her a long time ago, sometime last year, and we haven't seen any uh, movement here on, on the slots in Sydney Airport. There's, uh, that probably is maybe one of the big reasons why we've had so many cancelled flights, and I'm sure we've been all affected by that. Australians have been affected by massive amounts of flights cancelled. It would seem that Qantas and, I should say, Virgin are somewhat gaming the slot system in Sydney to keep their slots available and not running the flights as say they would. The cancellation rate for Qantas, Jetstar and uh, and Virgin have all been 8 per cent and above, whereas an airline like Rex, which doesn't have the same slot issue as, as them, is, is running a cancellation rate of only 2.3 per cent, I think, under 3 per cent. So, so the evidence here is we need more competition. The government has denied that competition. They haven't been able to explain that. We need to review this decision. The Senate should do that if the government is not, uh, because we should be getting the cost of living down for Australians. Thank you, Senator. Time for this discussion has